Quick, name three highly successful investors. Well, your list definitely included Warren Buffett. And we also know whom it didn't include, Ed Thorpe. Ed Thorpe is a pioneer of options trading and the person who developed the Black Skulls formula long before the men who put their names on it won a Nobel Prize for it. His model, which he kept secret and used to make millions of dollars with his hedge fund, paved the way for modern quantitative finance. Welcome back to Interesting Ventures, where today we are delving into the life and successes of Ed Thorpe, his unique approach to investing, and the lasting impact of his work on the world of finance. Edward Oakley Thorpe's rise to success has been through sheer love for academics, patterns, and problem solving. Ed was born in Chicago, Illinois on August 14, 1932, and went on to earn his bachelor's degree in physics from the University of California, Los Angeles in 1953. He continued his education with a master's degree, followed by a PhD in mathematics from UCLA. He then pursued a career in academia, becoming a professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1959, where he taught until 1961. From there, he continued to teach mathematics at New Mexico State University, and left it to become a founding member of the University of California Irvine faculty, also called UCI. During this time, he developed a particular interest in one thing, gambling. Not in an unhealthy way, mind you, because what piqued his curiosity were the mathematical principles involved in gambling. He based his ideas on the Kelly Criterion and learned Fortran programming to create the necessary equations for his research model on the probabilities of winning. Thorpe extensively analyzed the game of blackjack and devised card counting schemes that improved his odds of winning especially near the end of a card deck that had not been reshuffled after every deal. Ever the academic, Thorpe had to test his theories. He did this in Reno, Lake Tahoe, and Las Vegas, Nevada to see if it worked in practice. Manny Kimmel, a former bookmaker and wealthy professional gambler, provided Thorpe with the venture capital to start his research with $10,000, and together they began testing the theory at local blackjack tables where the experimental results proved successful. In fact, Thorpe won $11,000 in a single weekend, forcing casinos to implement countermeasures, such as shuffling cards much earlier to combat his methods. News of his methods quickly spread throughout the gambling community, generating demand for new ways to win and Thorpe became an instant celebrity among blackjack enthusiasts. His research into blackjack caught the attention of fellow mathematician and MIT professor Claude Shannon. Together, they developed the world's first wearable computer for advantage play in roulette, and later, blackjack. Due to the high demand for his research, Thorpe worked with Professor Sheen Kassouf to develop hedged investment theory and techniques and write the book, Beat the Market, A Scientific Stock Market System. The book is widely considered the original guide to card counting, and it sold over 700,000 copies, an impressive number for such a specialty topic, and it even earned a spot on the New York Times bestseller list. Interestingly, Thorpe's blackjack research is one of the rare examples where the results from academic research went directly to the public without going through the usual peer review process cycle. Although Thorpe stated that he considered the experiment an intellectual exercise, it still became a huge success and revolutionized the world of gambling. His curiosity and mathematical ability would serve him in a different way moving forward, helping him develop a formula that was so special he wanted to hide it from the world. The Black Skulls model is a Nobel Prize winning model that simulates the derivatives of a financial market, such as options, futures, and swaps. Its official creators were Fisher Black and Myron Skulls in 1972 and 1973. But Thorpe had already been using that model since the 60s to grow his own portfolio. He just didn't want to publish a paper on it, instead choosing to use it in the real world. After working out some initial issues, it quickly became the standard for estimating options prices. The model's central concept is to hedge the options in an investment portfolio by buying and selling the underlying stock outright, effectively eliminating any risk. Thorpe leveraged his formula to identify undervalued or overvalued options in the market, which presented arbitrage opportunities he could exploit. As a pioneer of quantitative finance, Thorpe's formula was instrumental in the success of his hedge fund, Princeton Newport Partners. PNP skyrocketed in the 70s, all thanks to that formula. Ed's insight into the market put him in a network of like-minded people. His approach was similar to Warren Buffett's, with a focus of staying within his circle of competence. 
However, unlike Buffett, Thorpe did not make his fortune by analyzing businesses. Instead, he decided early in life to invest in other people with a competitive advantage, which is how he came to invest in Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. In fact, Thorpe's first meeting with Buffett was the result of a mutual friend who asked him to do some due diligence on Thorpe as an investor. This led to Thorpe and his wife playing bridge with Buffett in 1968, where he was impressed by Buffett's mind and methods. Thorpe even predicted Buffett would eventually become the richest man in the world. Sure enough, in 2008, Warren Buffett became the richest person in the world. Forbes estimated his net worth at $62 billion, surpassing Bill Gates, who had held the top spot on the Forbes list for 13 years straight. So... As a pioneer of quantitative finance and options trading, Thorpe had a keen eye for detecting anomalies and discrepancies in the market, which, of course, made it painfully easy for him to spot a scam. When Thorpe learned about Madoff's investment strategy, which promised consistent returns and seemed too good to be true, he became suspicious. He ran the numbers and analyzed the returns, and as expected, they didn't add up. Thorpe concluded, rather publicly, that Madoff's whole strategy was flawed at best, and a scam at worst. But it wouldn't be until 10 years later that the world would wake up to the truth. In 2008, Madoff's Ponzi scheme unraveled, causing billions of dollars in losses for his investors. Thorpe's early warnings about the scheme had fallen on deaf ears, but his insight and analysis had been correct all along. He writes in his book, Quote, on the afternoon of Thursday, December 11th, 2008, I got the news I'd been expecting for more than 17 years. Calling from New York, my son Jeff said Bernie Madoff has confessed to defrauding investors of $50 billion in the greatest Ponzi scheme in history. It's what I predicted in 1991, end quote. Now, even though he achieved spectacular success in the market, Thorpe has made a few mistakes, and he has advised younger investors to keep these in mind when picking stocks. He recommends indexing for most investors, as the average active investor's return equals that of the index minus fees. However, Thorpe has developed a successful trading system called Most Up, Most Down, or MUD, which involves buying the bottom 10% of stocks that have fallen the most and selling short the top 10% of stocks that have risen the most during the previous two weeks. Thorpe emphasizes that investors need to fully test their methodology and ensure their strategy puts them on the right side of most trades before implementing an investment strategy. He also suggests finding the appropriate balance between risk and return, being mentally strong, staying within your circle of competence, and only participating if you have an edge. Thorpe believes the stock market and gambling have much in common and that investors can learn much from gambling. He also says not to pay attention to tips and gossip because such recommendations are usually worthless. If you have a strategy, trust that and go with it. Otherwise, stick to index funds and you'll be just fine. In fact, you'll probably beat a good portion of the market who don't know what they're doing. So what do you think of Ed's success story? Should he have shared his options theory earlier, or did we learn it at just the right time? Comment your thoughts below, and don't forget to subscribe to Interesting Ventures for more business content. Thanks for watching.